Hey everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Watch Out. I'm your host, Drew Vizula, and today it is June 30th, just going into the month of July, the heart of summer. And I promised you last episode we were going to look into what we call uh, tidal watches. And there are several different watches, several different brands out there that make Tidal watches. And I wanted to give you some examples of them because I think you'd be quite impressed on pretty much what's out there. If you are a beach person, if you are somebody who is a sailor, uh, somebody who uh, enjoys the nautical aspects of the summer, uh, you may want to know if you have a house on the shore you may want to know when high tide and low tide is and there's several different watches uh, there are several different aspects of watches that actually do um, high tide low tide in different areas of them as well so uh, and we're not going to be talking about any type of like apple watch or anything like that we're going to be talking about strict um, watches in general not smart watches because obviously you can go to an Apple Watch and ask it for anything. Um, we're, we're talking about either uh, digital watches or um, mechanical watches, quartz and, and mechanical watches that can actually tell you high and low tide um, aspects of the sea, which is something that you really don't hear about in watches too often. So without further ado, let's get started on that. Uh, the first one I'm going to bring up to you um, is actually from a company I really haven't brought up on the show because I really don't talk a lot about this company. Um, they're not really known for this type of thing, but they do make a model, and it's called the Base Tide Pro. And what's unique about this piece is it displays tide graphs for 550 locations around the world, as well as sunrise and sunset wave counters and it has the uh, backlight as well this is a digital watch um, it does have a hard crystal face and is good for up to 10 atm and i will show you that now and nixon is the one that makes it so again not something you may have been privy to in the past now when you look at this model the tide based pro you can see uh, what i'm talking about where they give you the high tide and low tide times based on the digital aspect of the watch. So what's interesting is that the 550 uh, locations around the world, I mean, you could probably set it to the location that you're looking for and you'll know high and low tide of the day based on your location, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, for a digital watch, obviously it's quartz, but it is um, 10 ATM, which again, you can go underneath water with, you have no problem um, even diving or snorkeling with. So that, that is a unique aspect uh, of the title aspect that we're talking about today. Uh, these watches usually probably cost around probably the two, $250 range, so they're really not that expensive. Uh, it is made of a polymer plastic material, so you're going to have that rubber aspect to it. Um, but again, it's, it's it's not a classy watch, it's just something for you to be out there, it'll take a beating, uh, I'm sure. And um, it does have a unique aspect to it, so if you are in that in that uh, realm where you don't want to spend too much for a title watch, uh, just something that gets the job done, um, based on 550 locations around the world, I think that's pretty cool uh, in that aspect. Uh, number two. In the same realm of the digital watch, in the same type uh, Casio the G-Shock also makes a digital model as well called the GBX 100-2 um, um, does have the tide graphs moon data high tide and the sunrise sunset times as well so this is a main competitor of Nixon in this category so it again if you're looking at the same type of rubber aspect to it I'll show you this as well so you do have the digital aspect this one is on the bottom whereas Nixon was on the top and again you do have the tide graphs and the sunrise sunset aspect uh, you can get all that information from Casio from the G-Shock now G-Shock is a very popular series 
So um, these probably cost a little bit more just because of the name. And uh, you're probably going to pay anywhere between three and three hundred fifty dollars for this brand new. But again, you're not going to have any problems with it water-wise. Again, 10 ATM, you're going to have. You know, G-Shocks are are built to burn you like run over by trucks. So um, it's something you can ground and pound. And um, you know, it, it's a unique digital aspect to a title watch, both G-Shock and Nixon. If you would like to go the digital route. Let's move on from the digital aspect and um, move on to more of a traditional aspect. Um, we're going to start off here with Timex. And Timex came out with their Tide Watch model, which is the T2N721. And this is more of a traditional model. It does give you an electronic compass. A temperature display which is actually pretty cool because we were talking about temperature watches uh, a couple episodes ago and that's something that is is kind of unique in this aspect especially with it not being a smartwatch uh, it does give you an adjustment scale and a nightlight so here's what it looks like this model from Timex and again, Timex is not the most expensive brand out there, so it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Okay, it is, I do believe, 40 millimeters, so it's, again, not that big of a size on the wrist, and it does come with a, a, a leather-type strap, which I'm sure this one is designed for the water. They wouldn't make a, a, a watch model like this that couldn't go underwater. But as you can see here, Okay, you do have the temperature display coming up across the top. Uh, over here, of course, you have your compass, your electronic compass, which I'm sure is set up through the four digital buttons over here. So this is more of a combination of quartz, um, both analog and digital. So it's more like an anti-digi piece, um, which is you're getting away from that digital aspect and going more towards the traditional style. But um, it does give you some unique aspects uh, of this watch as well. So I think Timex uh, does a nice little job here. Probably around $150 to $200 again in that range. Again, Timex is very affordable. So I wouldn't be surprised for that to be in about that range. It shouldn't cost you an arm or a leg uh, as well. Let's go back to uh, G-Shock because they come back with another different model when it comes to the title uh, aspects of their watch. It's not just one model, they have another one. And this one is actually even more expensive. This is around $800. And this model is called the Casio Men's Fishing Timer model. And again, this one gives you a compass, a barometer, uh, for a compass if you get lost. It does give you the moon phase data as well as being 10 ATM as well. It does also have a dual time aspect and does give the high and low tide, but it does it in the dial phase. And it also has a 24 hour uh, clock as well. So again, this one actually is 200 meters, I'm sorry, not uh, 10 ATM, this is 20 ATM. So this is listed as a diver's piece and it's also solar. So let's take a look at this one for a minute. All right, so I'll bring this over here. So that is this model, okay? So this model, as you can see, uh, here is the dual time zone right over here. So you have the tool aspect. So if you're on vacation, you can use the tool aspect and know where you are both at on the home time and on vacation time, which is cool. And here's your high tide, low tide um, phase model right there. And of course, you also have the 24 hour clock as well. But like what makes this one actually even more unique is the fact that it is solar. So for those of you who don't know what solar is, uh, that's watches that are powered by the sun through a long term battery that usually lasts anywhere between 10 and 20 years. So you are using a quartz natured battery, but again, it is rechargeable through solar, so you're really not gonna have to worry about this for quite a long time. 
uh, of a battery change and it is a diver's piece. Now again, this is going to be a bigger model. This will probably be around 44, 45 millimeters, so you're going to have to have a slightly bigger wrist for this sucker. And the price tag is a little bit more expensive. So you just know that going in, um, this one's going to cost you a bit more, but at the same time does give you a unique aspect of um, the title watch that really hasn't been uh, portrayed in the other models I've showed you so far. So each one is giving a slightly different aspect of it. Another brand that is out there that makes uh, a lot of title watches is called Rip Curl. This is more of a surfer brand uh, that I have seen before. Uh, you'll usually find them like Ron John, that type of um, aspect when you're looking uh, retail wise. And this specific model is called the Tide Master. And this one is called the Rip Curl Men's A1113. And their claim to fame here is about $300. And again, it's 10 ATM, which seems to be uh, about the uh, minimum aspect for these type of watches. Um, it does have the high tide, low tide, falling and rising aspect, but it has it on the outer wheel instead of the inner wheel, which is a little uh, unique. It also does have a couple other subdials as well. Um, for the title aspects of it as well, and it does have a heat meter uh, as well. So let me show you the rip curl version. Again, this is around $300. Uh, Size-wise, it's probably going to be anywhere between 42 and 44 millimeters. Again, this one is quartz. It's not solar, uh, like the G-Shock was before it. So you're not going to have, uh, you would have to change this battery out probably every year to every two years. And um, again, the, the only the claim to fame on this one is the high tide and low tide aspect is dominated by this outer wheel here instead of one of the inner ones, which is uh, more prototypical for a type of tidal watch. So these are things that are on the market today um, that you can really, really sink your teeth into if you want to get into the tidal watches. If you want to go old school and you're looking for something that is automatic, we're not talking about quartz, we're not talking about solar, we're not talking about digital, we're not talking about a smartwatch, we're talking about automatic, pure old school. You're going to have to go with pretty much what I'm wearing and you're going to have to get them used because they don't, there really isn't anything on the market that's automatic that's a title watch. And the Swiss brand that was known for doing it best, both back in the day up till probably about 10 years ago when they, when they stopped making them new, is Corum. And I have listed this in a previous episode, um, I'm not sure if it was on Watch Out or It's About Time, either series, uh, I had a, a different model of this, of the Admiral's Cup, and that's exactly what this one is. This is a slightly different version of the Admiral's Cup. This is more of a, of a traditional version of the Admiral's Cup. So let's take a look at this one. And here it is. Now this piece is a beautiful piece. Um, this is a 38 millimeter uh, Admiral's Cup title watch. And for what you can see over here, again, it has the three subdials that you're looking at. Uh, the outer dial is the flags, uh, the nautical flags, uh, yeah, that's what Quorum, the Admiral's Cup, was known for, uh, was the sea racing. Um, and these were the countries that, were, that took part in that. So that's not really important on this watch. What's really important on this piece, even though it does have the 18 karat gold off the sides, which is a really unique um, piece to its 18 karat solid gold, that's a nice aspect to it. It is 10 ATM, but um, most of these traditional tidal watches, as you can see here, will have the high tide, low tide, rising, falling off here on the subdial, not like the rip curl, which has it on the outer dial over here. And um, you, this is actually the moon phase. So the moon phase, the, the 28 days, whatever it was on the moon phase, this will tell you the phase of the actual moon, 
which is really cool an aspect uh, of this watch and of course this is the 24 hour dial as well with the date so there's a lot of different ways to get into a uh, a title watch it all depends which avenue you would like to go which avenue you would like to pursue uh, with this I mean something like this the Corum Admiral's Cup is going to cost you anywhere probably between $25 and $3,500. Uh, these are more collector's pieces at this point. Um, and they run, again, these have the, the Swiss movements in them. They're going to run you 10 times what a Rip Curl or a Timex or a Casio uh, is going to, to run you. So it all depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for automatic, you're looking for digital, you're looking for solar, you're looking for just a regular quartz, it all depends. So these are the different types of title watches that are on the market these days for those who are into this. And um, that's pretty much uh, a recap of uh, this sector of the market that I wanted to go over to you today. Um, next time we're gonna go into a unique brand, uh, Eberhard, um, and I will go into the history of it and what are their watches as well to go over the Chrono 4 uh, model and to give you a little history on uh, Eberhard, which I have been to the NYC time show and experienced them. So we will get into that next month. But again, thanks guys. Keep leaving your likes, your responses, um, you know, any um, information or episodes you'd like to see in the future. I'm all ears as well as as long as I'm doing this series. So um, I hope everybody has a safe holiday weekend and um, I'll see you next month on another episode of.